Hi, Mike Gaben here with a new series. Well, sort of a new series. In my tutorial series, I often conclude the videos with a closer look at the math behind the topics being discussed. I've had people mention specifically how much they like my math segments, so I thought it might be worthwhile to package them separately. So this series is going to be just that, the math segments from each tutorial for those that just want the math. In this first video, I talked about building a simple suborbital rocket. In the VAB, I tweaked the amount of fuel in the booster as well as the thrust. And I used that as an opportunity to talk about thrust to weight ratios, how to calculate them, what values to shoot for, and what happens when those values are off. So with that, let's do the math. Back in the VAB, I adjusted the thrust to 37%, which seems like an oddly specific number. Well, it was, because I worked out previously what would be a good number to set my thrust at. So let me show you how to calculate that yourself. But first, we need to look at thrust a little more closely. Let's freeze this image and zoom in closer on the business end of this rocket. Right now our rocket is busy burning fuel. Well, exploding may be a more accurate term, and the gases that result from that explosion want to expand very quickly. However, they are giving nowhere to go other than out the nozzle at the bottom. This results in the gases leaving the nozzle at a very high velocity. The engine is exerting a great deal of force on these gases and, according to Newton's third law, every force is accompanied by an equal and opposite force. And it is this reaction force on the rocket that propels it forward. We call this force thrust. Now there are other forces acting on this rocket right now, but the one additional force I want to concentrate on here is the force of gravity, which is trying to pull the rocket back down towards Kerbin's surface. We call this force weight. If we divide the thrust by the weight, we get a very useful number for us called the thrust to weight ratio, or TWR. Put simply, if the TWR is greater than one, rocket go up, less than one, rocket not go up. With that, let's go into the VAB and work out some thrust to weight ratios. We need to differentiate between weight and mass. As mentioned, weight is the force of gravity on an object while mass is something different. For our purposes, we'll define mass as simply the amount of stuff, you know, atoms and whatnot, that make up the object. In our everyday lives, we tend to use the words weight and mass interchangeably, and this is completely okay, because as long as we remain on the surface of the Earth, weight and mass are directly related. Something with twice the mass will just have twice the weight. But mass is not the only thing weight depends on. Weight is also directly related to the gravitational field strength. Twice the strength of the gravitational field, twice the weight of an object of a given mass. This gives us a formula. Weight, or the force of gravity, so we'll represent it with an Fg, equals mass times the gravitational field strength, which we'll represent with a g. On the surface of Kerbin, g is about the same as it is on the surface of the Earth, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, or using the units that are more commonly used in KSP, 9.8 kilonewtons per metric ton. In order to calculate the weight of our rocket, all we need is the total mass, which is handily available with the engineering stats here at the bottom right. It's 8.6 tons. And I should mention that this is the rocket before I did any tweaking to the booster. So, doing the math, Force of gravity is equal to 8.6 times 9.8, which gets us 84.28 kilonewton. Next, we need to thrust. That is even easier. Right-clicking on the booster in the inventory, we see two thrusts, ASL, 250 kilonewtons, and VAC, 300 kilonewtons. The first is the thrust on the surface of Kerbin. The second is the thrust in the vacuum of space. Let's work out our thrust-to-weight ratio at takeoff. So, TWR equals 250, divided by 84.28, which gets us 2.97. That's quite the kick in the pants for Jeb. For comparison, the Soyuz, which is our current vehicle for bringing people into space, has a launch thrust to weight ratio of about 1.3. But it gets worse. Let's work out what the TWR would be right when the fuel runs out. My first launch never got to this point, but this will give us a very good idea as to what the problem was. By this point, we would have been high enough in the atmosphere that the thrust would have been far closer to the 300 kilonewtons rather than the 250 kilonewtons. So we'll use that number. 
But more significantly, we would have lost the mass of all of that fuel. The part information gives us the mass, gives us the mass of the fuel at 6.1 tons. So our new vehicle mass would be 8.6 minus 6.15 or 2.45 tons. Now technically, being off the surface would result in the gravitational field strength going down, but, and for now you'll just have to trust me on this one, it doesn't go down enough for us to worry about. I'll make this a topic in a future episode. Anyway, this gives us a new TWR of 12.5. Clearly this was enough to blow up our rocket before we even got to this point, but to give this number some perspective, if we ignore air resistance, gives, this gives us the acceleration of our spacecraft which is also the force our pilot feels. 1g is what all of us feel almost all the time. A sustained force of 2g's means you are twice as heavy. And that's all of you, your heart, your brain, your bones, your eyes, everything. A trained fit pilot in a g-suit can sustain about 9g's before they are likely to lose consciousness. Beyond that, we're looking at possible death. Now, KSP doesn't model that effect on our pilot, but nonetheless, let's get this under some control and go to the tweaked version of my rocket. After taking out about a quarter of the fuel, the mass at launch was 6.8 tons. In addition, I reduced the thrust to only 37% of its max thrust. That gives us a launch thrust of 92.5 kilonewtons, and this gives us a launch thrust to weight ratio only 1.39. Now that's more like it. Let's take a look at the TWR at main engine cutoff. Here, instead of 12.5, my TWR goes down to 4.6. To put that into perspective, it isn't unusual for roller coasters to max out around 5 Gs, though for much shorter periods of time than our pilot would have had to endure. Still, especially for KSP, well within our tolerances. So to summarize, managing the thrust to weight ratios of your rockets makes them easier to control and less likely to explode. And don't forget to check the max TWR that you will be getting as the fuel runs out. This will end it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and that you will be back again next time.